Hello, and welcome to the first Coffee and Coin episode of 2023. I cannot believe we are in a new year. It happens just like that. And the last two years have been really fuzzy. I don't know about you, but ever since the pandemic hit in 2020, it's been like a gray area for when we wore masks, when we didn't when we had vaccinations, how well they were working, who in your friend group got COVID. It's just been a whirlwind these last few years. And some people barely survived with their health and other people managed to thrive, which is crazy to say with a worldwide pandemic. But on today's episode, I am going to talk to you about how to show up for your finances and thrive in 2023. So I'm going to kick off the episode giving you a little peek into one of my mentors. Her name is Brooke Castillo. If you've never heard that name before, get ready to jump into her podcast. She has a great one. You will thank me later. I'm going to talk to you about the difference between signing up and showing up because they are light years apart. And then I'm going to talk to you about how you can show up for your finances this year. As I just said, it's been a really fuzzy last few years, but for me in both my personal life, my business life, and my finances, I am very grateful to say that I have been thriving. But that is not just luck. That is due to diligent, hard work day in, day out, and showing up. So Let's jump into it. Starting with Brooke Castillo. If you have never heard her name, she is amazing. I just attended her conference. It was called Life Coach School Live, and it happened back in November. She is a life coach with a $50 million business who is working towards having a $100 million business so that she can be an example of what's possible. She actually loves to talk about money which you know I love because that is the theme of this podcast and one of the reasons I'm a fangirl, but I'm also really invigorated by her for a number of reasons. She's an incredible businesswoman. She really manages her mind very well so that she has this extreme clarity of thought. She's a life coach, which I used to actually have some negative thoughts around that line of work. And I kind of thought it might be, you know, depending on the person, is it really validated that someone can life coach you on something that they haven't done? I just didn't know very much about life coaching and I had never had life coaching, but I've actually been getting coached for over a year now. And I can attest that coaching is incredible. Obviously you got to have the right coach, but when you do, it can really propel you into the next things you want to do. Um, and she is also amazing because she has finessed what is called the model. So she has this framework that helps you understand your mind and recognize that your thoughts are the reason for the results that are showing up in your life. So this is how her model works. It has five different stages. You can start at any stage, but in order It would be that your circumstances in life, things that are going on that are just a fact, they can be proven in a court of law. Your circumstances then create thoughts about those circumstances. Those thoughts create feelings in your body, which is just some sort of vibration. Are you happy? Are you sad? Are you angry? Are you loving? What is the feeling generated? Then those feelings create actions and those actions are what bring the results into your life. And so this model is her framework that during the Life Coach School Live three-day event, she sat on stage with a microphone and people willingly shared their biggest issues and problems and all the stuff that they're dealing with in life, very personal stuff. And with that one simple framework, she helps them understand how it was their thoughts about a circumstance that led to the feelings that led to the action and ultimately 
the results that they were seeing in their life that they didn't want. So I want to back up quickly and talk to you about why I went to a life coach conference. And here's why. I had a baby in August, as some of you know, and I was just getting back to my health after baby and those postpartum walks that I took by myself with a podcast in were absolutely magical. I always go to her podcast first, the Life Coach podcast, and hit play. The podcast I was listening to is when she introduced that she was doing a live event for the first time in a while. And one of my personal values and a factora company value is called decide and do. So next thing I know, I am running home to tell my husband about how incredible this event sounds and how I really want to go, but I don't know if I can go because we have a three month old baby and the event is in Arizona. We live in Austin. And he reminded me about that value. So because I was just so invigorated and really wanted to go and learn from this person who I've been learning from on her podcast for two years now, we went ahead and bought the tickets. And the reason I wanted to share this part is because those tickets sold out within a week. And I was ready to sit and marinate and think about it a little bit longer and, oh, it's a lot of money. And I could find a billion different reasons why I shouldn't go. But my husband could hear in my voice that I really wanted to go. I wanted to show up for this and show up for myself as both a business owner and someone who is continuously working on my self-development so that I can be a better leader in this company and leader to this women's wealth movement. And that takes more than sitting at home and being in my comfort zone. So not only did we buy tickets, but we bought the VIP tickets and we made it a family affair. We then brought my mother-in-law to take care of the three-month-old baby and we brought the baby. So baby's first trip was to Arizona for a life coach conference. Could not have seen that coming. And yet it was just as amazing as I had hoped it would be. So we spent a few days there, and let me tell you, just from someone who hosts this podcast and has hosted live in-person events before, for maybe 150 people tops, there were over 1,000 people in the room, and it is not easy to be on stage for an hour. She was on stage for three days with a microphone, basically by herself, helping people break through their own mental prisons, which was a quote that halfway through this conference, my husband looked at me and said, wow, people really are all just trapped in their own mental prisons. And I wrote that down because it was so true. Their problems looked like my problems, looked like the next person problems. And we just ruminate in this world of our thoughts and we think our thoughts are true. And They're not always true. Circumstances that can be proven in a court of law are neutral. So let me give you an example of how you could use this model. Someone might come up and say that their problem is that they don't make enough money. And they would say that's their circumstance, but that's not true because that's pretty subjective. What is enough? You thinking you don't make enough money compared to someone else might be wildly different. You might make $100,000 and say, this isn't enough. And someone is making $50,000 saying, if I could just have $100,000, it would be the right amount of money. So the actual circumstance there is not that you don't make enough money. It's that you make money. That you can prove. You can show that you've got a pay stub, like court of law will agree that this person makes money. Your thought is that you're not making enough money. And that negative thought about the circumstance is what leads to a particular set of feelings that are likely negative, actions or inactions, and then the results that you don't want to see played out. And so she helped people go through this model time and time again and recognize that it was really their own thinking about something that was a neutral circumstance, even though they thought, actually, it has to be a negative thing for me. 
um, that it was actually the circumstance being neutral and what they thought about it that was negative or positive. And go over to her podcast and listen to any of her episodes that really deep dive the model because it is so brilliant. We have something like 60,000 thoughts a day and they're flying through our mind. Some are conscious, some are subconscious. And we just kind of think that most of them are true, but our brains lie to us a lot. And that is because they needed to scare us that something's moving over there in the woods, get ready to take off. That's how the prefrontal cortex got built. And I'm not going to go into all the science about it, but we are still living with a lot more fears and negativity than we need to be. But the only way we can get out of that is understanding what's happening in our brains and how to manage our minds better. And so she is the creme de la creme when it comes for learning more about your thoughts and why the results in your life are what they are. Okay. So another thing that she says that I think is so brilliant is if someone is going to be unhappy about your life, it shouldn't be you. And what I recognize from that conference is that people are so afraid of other people's judgments. They are more afraid of that than dying. And Nobody wants to be judged. They just think it's going to be the most painful thing ever. But if you really stop to think about it, if someone is judging you, it's happening in their own brain and you might not ever even know about it. So I just loved that her advice was basically let them judge because we waste so much time expending energy trying to control someone else's thoughts about us. And in the end, it's not even possible. It is happening in their head, just like all of our thoughts are happening in our head. And so you can't control them. We oftentimes don't think we can control our own thoughts, but the good news is that is where we do have some control. So that is where you should keep your focus. Another concept that she talked about at the conference that I thought was really enlightening is something called the miserable maybe. So if you imagine a line going across a page and the beginning of the line says desires and the end of the line says dreams, a lot of people have desires that pull them towards a line of work or a goal, right? The dream. But then there's this big ditch that happens in between the desires and the dream. And this ditch or this big hole, so to speak, is where people are walking along with their desires and they fall into the ditch. That is called the miserable maybe. But here's the thing. So many people fall into the miserable maybe that it doesn't even seem like a wild place to be. It's the norm. People think that's just life. You have dreams, but you don't necessarily get to reach them. You want things, but mm, it's harder to go out and work for them than it is to just chill here with everybody else in normal land. So how do you get out of the miserable baby? Well, you have to make decisions. Decisions are what lead you towards action. Just deciding, deciding I want to be a marathon runner gives you the ability to even strap on some sneakers and go for your first run. If you never think that you can be something, you're not even going to attempt to achieve it. So there is so much power in making decisions for ourselves. And yet a lot of us just don't. We let society make decisions for us. We say, "Eh, it is what it is. We'll leave it at that. But you do not have to live a life like that. And so what I realized is that there is such a big difference between signing up for something and actually showing up. Take me, for example. I could have signed up for that conference and then, and this did happen, I had the overwhelm hit me. I'm a new mom. I'm 100% breastfeeding. I can't leave my child, but I can't bring my child because then the trip is too expensive. And then I'm not going to be able to get my full money's worth because I'm going to be breastfeeding her. And is this even a good time to go with the holidays coming up? Is she too young? Can I even take her? Just blah, 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 noise, thoughts, 
just all over the place, human brain stuff, right? You can relate to this spiral, I'm sure. And so instead, instead of just signing up for the conference and either not going or reselling my tickets or giving in to any of these fears, I doubled down on my commitment and I showed up. I went there. I knew that I would take a lot of value for actually being there in person. By the way, she opened up a virtual option, so I could have just switched to a virtual ticket. But I went, I learned, I took a notebook's worth of notes. I met some incredible people. I bonded with my husband. I made bigger plans and goals. I got to travel with my daughter for the first time and be so inspired for the year ahead because I actually showed up. So that kind of leads me back to that decide and do value. It is after you make the powerful decision that you want something that you actually have to go and do the work. Otherwise, you can't just expect the results or really be surprised that you're not seeing any results. The best teacher is experience. So I see this so much when it comes to money. Everyone is so afraid that they're going to be a bad investor that they don't even invest at all. And the only way to become a good investor, a good runner, a good mother, a good anything, insert anything into the blank, is by doing it. Experience is our teacher. We have to have, this is a baseball term, but a number of at-bats before we can hit a home run. So... When it comes to something like investing, the only way that you're going to get good at it is doing it. And then not just doing it once, but doing it for years. I mean, wealth building is something that you can do for your entire life. It is a marathon, not a sprint. And so you need to not just be investing in normal years when times are good, but in downturns so that you understand how to hang on through a downturn. Let me give you an example. Last year, we know that crypto was absolutely crazy. It was palpable. Everybody's brother's mother, sister wanted to talk about Bitcoin and investing in all these different coins. And what did you think about crypto and how to get in? And guess what? I have been investing for a few years now and I had had a little bit of crypto experience, but I also got into the craze. So I put some money in when things were high and now things are really low. I mean, I bought in around 45,000 when that was the Bitcoin valuation and now it's under 16,000. And the reason I'm sharing this is because this is how I learned. I will not make that mistake again because I have lived experience of not getting in when everyone's on the craze. And interestingly enough, we don't teach about crypto in the wealth circle, but we do teach about investing in the stock market. And this is stuff I talk about with the stock market all the time, but I didn't apply it to this other space. And so I got to experience firsthand what it was like. And now I am a better investor and I will be more thoughtful about my alternative investments going forward because I have experience and I learn from it. So how can you show up for your finances in this year? Well, it's a combination. There's the decision to show up followed by doing the work. And the reason that I believe that the wealth circle is so successful and that the women who have taken it see such incredible results is because they don't just theoretically learn about investing concepts. They do learn about those investing concepts and all of this financial education is where we start. But the only way that they actually go and implement and make changes and open up accounts and get different financial services and products is because there is a community there for accountability. So when you see 1,500 other women in a private Slack channel talking about 
what they're doing with their money and the different account structures they're doing and the invest and the different investment strategies they have and you see how much action they're taking it is so desirable for you to be doing it too it's FOMO right nobody wants to get left behind if she's opening a high yield savings account why shouldn't I do that same thing so I could be earning a higher interest on my cash that's just sitting there so I really think it's important to break down that education is one piece right Anyone can learn how to invest. That's how I did it. I didn't have a factorial community. I read books. I listened to podcasts. I would stay up at night and read investment terminology on investopedia.com. I cannot tell you how paint drying, nails on a chalkboard, boring that was, but it's what I did. And then it's what I didn't do that was even more of a learning. I now knew all the things I should be doing with my money, but I sat frozen for over a year because just because you learn how to do something doesn't mean you actually do it, right? We can look at this with sleep. We all know that we probably shouldn't look at our phones before bed and that we should have a nice sleep routine to get us in the mood for sleep and that we should try and get seven plus hours. That doesn't mean we do it. Same Thing with investing. I knew what I should be doing, and yet I was terrified to do it wrong. So I never got started for that whole year after I had learned all of the options available to me. I also didn't have a lot of discretionary income. So my excuse was, well, since I have so little money to start investing with, I cannot do it wrong. But that is so much pressure. That gets you away from the experience thing, right? I just shared that I did some quote unquote, not great crypto trades. And yet here I am still standing, still have over a million dollar net worth, not a big deal. I was really thoughtful about how much money I would even put towards alternatives because you have to have the fundamentals down first. And when all the people jump straight into crypto and they forget to get their tax advantage retirement accounts set up and their taxable brokerages and all those other fundamentals that we teach in the wall circle, it just shakes me to my core for them because there is no get rich quick scheme. If someone is selling you on that, run away, right? You have to have the basics down and that's what we teach in the wall circle. So how did I finally take that first step? Well, I paid someone to sit next to me while I opened up my first robo-advisor account and put $250 in it, thinking it was all going to be disappeared by the next day. But lo and behold, it wasn't. And I started to see my money make money for me. And once I got the ball rolling with that first brokerage account, it was way easier to open the next one. Once I compared high yield savings accounts for the first time, it wasn't intimidating to do it when I needed to open another one later on. So education is one piece, but there's learning and then there's doing. So how do you get to the doing part when it comes to your money? I truly believe, especially women, we need community. We can't be alone by ourselves reading investopedia.com at night And then suddenly it dawns on us how we should set up all of our financial systems, what accounts we need, and then we go and do it. And then we're done. No, we want to talk about it. I want to consider different strategies and I need a community to do that with. So we have a great community at Factora, not just in our Slack workspace, but the women who take the wealth circle because we run them twice a year. That's your cohort, whoever you take it with. And there's a private Slack channel just for the group that's going through it to ask their questions, to swap insights, and then to be one another's actual accountability partners. And accountability is so much more than people want to give it credit for. Like, sure, sure, we all talk about accountability. We hear, oh, it's, it's important. You need it. Having a dedicated person to talk to about your financial goals and to hold you accountable to taking steps towards making them happen is absolutely priceless. You guys have heard me on the podcast. I bring my accountability partner, Stefan, probably once a quarter, and we are 
constantly pushing each other to dream bigger, make more changes, not necessarily faster, but more strategically. And it's just really exciting to see so many more women doing that. Because if you don't have someone to talk to about your money and your goals, and you don't have someone who knows the different investing options, it's kind of hard to get started. I get that. So we already have this group of women who are doing it alongside of you. And then we pair you up for additional accountability. We also have a whole episode on accountability you should listen to about the percentage of how much more likely you are to hit your goals from having a goal that's in your brain to writing the goal down to putting accountability in place, maybe just with yourself, maybe telling one person, and then actually putting ongoing accountability in place, meaning picking a dedicated person that you meet up with regularly for those goals. And that gets you 95% of the way to achieving the goal. It's basically like the goal becomes inevitable once you have that system of accountability in place. And finally, action. At the end of the day, you have to do it. You have to implement the changes that you're talking about. So when I say in the Factor community, you see other women opening up investment accounts and putting their dollar cost averaging automations on or rolling over a 401k or opening up their first IRA or whatever it is, because there's so many financial steps that we can take and maybe haven't taken yet. When you see other women doing it, it inspires action. And that action is also experience. The more you get comfortable doing one financial thing, the easier it is to do several more. And that is how it all builds on each other, my friends. So I hope that that inspired you to really push forward and show up for your finances in 2023. If you are looking for education, a community, and real accountability to make this year your most incredible financial year yet and end the year thriving when it comes to your money, your investments, your net worth, your opportunities, then I highly suggest you sign up for the Spring Well Circle Waitlist. We are going live, opening up the course on January 18th, but we are already 34% of the way full just from the different referrals in our network, and we always sell out. So this is the year to invest in you. And actually, I should really just end with a quote from Brooke. She talks about how when it comes to investing in your own brain, it is the only thing that can't be taken away from us because it resides in a place that no one can take that asset. So if you're ready to invest in your brain this year and your community, I hope to see you in the spring 2023 Well Circle. If you enjoyed this episode, come join us in a Well Circle. It's our live online 12 week course and community where we teach you how to create a personalized financial plan alongside hundreds of other women building wealth. It will change your life and your money for good. You can apply at factorawealth.com forward slash well circle. That's factorawealth.com forward slash well circle. See you in the next episode.